Blue Ink by Elizabeth Scarhart and Snowball the Snowflake. Illustrated by Snowball the Snowflake. Narrated by Elizabeth Scarhart. Chapter 4 Different Yet Equal. The hole opened and Sands rode his way back in Snowden. Ink was sitting behind him, leaning against him, still out cold. He'd used Ink's scarf to tie Ink to his back to make sure he didn't fall off. His paintbrush was slipped back into place on Ink's back. Ink looked flushed, and the circles under his eyes were more prominent. Once they were back, Sands carefully dismounted, carrying Ink on his back. He made his way inside and got Ink onto the couch. Papyrus, help me, please! Papyrus came out of his room, and upon seeing Ink passed out on the couch, made his way downstairs. What happened? He asked as he removed the paintbrush and took off Ink's holster of paints to try and make him more comfortable. I'm not sure. Eric had while I was with him. I don't think Ink got hit, but after Eric retreated, Ink suddenly collapsed. His bones are really warm. Sans told him. The pirate laid a hand on the artist's forehead. You're right. It feels like he has a fever. Well, this is what you made the room for. You and Elfie finished it the other day, right? Sans nodded. Good. I'll carry him there. Get a thermometer, a bowl of ice cold water, and a washcloth. Before long, Ink was tucked into bed, and Papyrus was examining the thermometer that had been under his arm moments ago. Andre might one. It's a mild fever, but he's definitely sick. Maybe he has a cold? Sans asked as he soaked the washcloth in the icy water. He rang it out and folded it, placing it on Ink's brow. His nose socket isn't running. Was he coughing when you were with him? Papyrus asked. Sans shook his head. Then I don't think so. Didn't he tell us that if he's cut off from creativity outside of his own for too long, he gets sick and weak? I'll bet that's it. He's been fighting air so much and he hasn't been able to recharge. That makes sense. Sans agreed. All the more reason to keep him here for a while. Air is injured too, so we don't have to worry about fighting him for a while. Papyrus left after a few minutes to put the bike away and to store Ink's tools someplace safe. Plus, he needed to smoke after the sudden stress of an unconscious skeleton and knew better than to light up around someone who was sick. Sans stayed by Ink's side, watching him. After about thirty minutes, Ink finally gave a soft groan and opened his eyes. Sans? Where am I? He asked tiredly. The room was amazing. The walls and blanket both looked like they were splattered with paint. The dresser in the corner was white, with different shapes for all the knobs. The mirror in the other corner was shaped like a figure eight. The curtains were covered with different cartoony animals, and the black and white rug had a spiral from its sides into its center. Welcome to the creative room, Sans told him. It's a room Alfie's and I especially made with lots of creativity. Perfect for you to stay in and recharge any time you're visiting. I did tell you I wanted you to rest with us when you needed to. Ink slowly sat up the washcloth falling onto his lap. Sans retrieved it and went to re-soak it for a while. Ink looked around, astonished at everything he saw. You made this? For me? Of course! Sans smiled. A guest room made specifically for your needs. Plus the dresser is full of art supplies, so if you ever need a bigger boost, you and I can do something imaginative together. Ink smiled. Tears began to roll down his cheeks. It's so beautiful, he told Sans. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Sam smiled. We can work on something with the art supplies later. Right now you really need to rest. You're running a bit of a fever. He gently pushed Ink back onto his pillow and pulled the blankets over him. He wrung out the washcloth and put it back on Ink's forehead. Ink gave no resistance. He felt drained. You probably just haven't been around creative things for a while. Sam said. Didn't you say this sometimes caused this? Ink nodded. I'll be okay. This room's doing me a lot of good, he said, meeting Sans's eyes. Good, and I did it right. Sans grinned. You just stay here as long as you need to. I'll hear if you must. Hank laughed. <laughs> no, I'll be fine in a few days at most. I really do appreciate this, though. To be honest, I'm not used to people treating me like this. Really? Sans was surprised. You save universes all the time. I would have thought that everyone would want to be your friend. It's not like that. A lot of worlds know what I do for them and appreciate what I do, but they also recognize that I'm not like them and they treat me differently. They don't always realize I have things I need too. Ink explained. You're the first person to treat me as an equal. 
Well, just because they're a different kind of being doesn't mean you don't need things. Sam said. I mean, you have a fever. Everyone gets those. If these kinds of rooms are what heals that, then why shouldn't I have one ready? Even if that weren't the case, you've done a lot for me. It'd be pretty cruel not to take care of you in return. Yeah. Still, thanks. Ink smiled. Speaking of needing things, is there anything I can get you? Are you hungry or something? Sans asked. Not hungry, though some water would be nice, Ink told him. Sans was happy to oblige. Two days passed. Ink was feeling a lot more like his old self. Sans had gotten out some colored pencils and had put a sturdy box on the bed between himself and Ink. The two of them were drawing to help further Ink's recovery. Ink was drawing a race car and quickly drew lines across the paper to show the car's speed. Zoom! 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 He suddenly dropped the pencil and covered his mouth. He leaned over the edge of the bed and threw up black ink into the wastebasket. Ugh. Sorry about that. Whoa, are you okay? Sans asked, staring at the wastebasket full of ink. Yeah, that happens sometimes when I'm excited. Just part of being me, Ink replied. He stuck out his hand and absorbed the ink back into his body. There, like nothing ever happened. Not counting the ink still on your chin, Sans pointed out. Ink gave an awkward smile and wiped the ink off using the back of his glove. There, now it's like nothing ever happened. I hope that didn't gross you out. Ha! Nothing disturbs the magnificent Sands. Sands puffed out his chest, making Ink laugh. Besides, it looks like you're getting better if you're able to reabsorb the ink like that. I told you I'd be okay. Ink grinned. Enough about me. What are you drawing? He set his drawing aside and leaned over to take a better look at Sands. It showed what looked like a tiny lion cub with wings and a long tail. I'm making a thank you card for Undyne. If it weren't for her machine, you wouldn't be here right now. Sands said. What's with the lion? Ink asked, pointing to the creature in the front. Undyne loves anime, and he's from a show she likes. Sans explained. His name's... Kiro? Or Kiro? Cairo? I really don't know. I don't like anime much. Do you? Ink cocked a non-existent eyebrow at Sans. Right. Anime's an art. That was a stupid question. Ink laughed. It's okay. So, are you making anything for your brother, too? I might. Sans shrugged. Maybe I can draw him drinking honey at Muffets or something. Maybe I'll even include him paying his 50,000 G tab. You know, to hint at what he might be doing. I heard that. Papyrus walked in. Alfie's is on the phone. Oh, okay. Sans set down his drawing and hopped off the bed. I'll be back in a bit. He promised before heading into the house. Papyrus walked over to Ink. How are you feeling? Great. Ink replied. Oh, I keep looking to ask. I know the shoes are on the floor by the bed. I saw them there. But where's my scarf and tools? In the house in the closet, Papyrus replied. Sans had to use your scarf to keep you from falling off his motorbike would bring you here. And I took your brush and paints because I figured you'd be more comfortable sleeping without them. I've just been too lazy to move them out here. Ink nodded. As so long as they're safe and within reach, I don't care. Papyrus nodded. He felt Ink's forehead with the back of his hand. It feels like your fever's gone. Yeah, I'll be gone tomorrow, Ink said. I'm feeling tons better. No rush, Papyrus said casually. Welcome to stay here longer. After all, Sans specially made this room for you. You know, it was entirely his idea. He really cares about you. Ha ha, I see where you're going with this, Ink told Papyrus. It's not going to work. I'm still not telling Sans how I feel about him. Papyrus shrugged. We're at the shot. The hole opened and Sans ran. Ran? <laughs> no. Although that would be also pretty dramatic. Ah, his paint. His paintbrush. <laughs> Skype! Skype! I forgot to turn off Skype! And the blips are setting me off. Even if that weren't the case, you've done a lot for me. It'd be pretty cool not to. Yes, it'd be pretty cool of you not to do that, Sans. 